Okay. Uh, screen is not on. Screen is on. I had a very busy lunch dealing with the photocopier. So I did not get to boil my water for my calming cup of tea. Make sure this is done. Number one. Number one. He waited patiently. B. If you don't have what I have, what do you need to do? Mark it wrong and ask because you're having a test on this tomorrow. So I will wait patiently for a moment after I've circled number one and wait until people say, okay. Okay. Number two. A. Okay. Number three. Oh, we're all over the map on number three. C. C. Now, I will wait patiently. Oh, yay, there we go. Okay, you have, <clears throat> you have two options. One, you could sketch the graph, right? So you could find the roots, right? And you can see all the roots are, they're already there for you. So negative four thirds, positive five halves. It's a happy parabola. So I want where it's less than that, right? Okay, so where is that? It's in here, right? So it is between negative four-thirds and five-halves, but it's less than, so no equal signs. Because this is where it is less than zero. The other option is, of course, you don't need to graph it at all. You can find the roots, put it on a number line, and check the three points. You only need to check one of them. If this works, then it's between the negative one and the positive, or the smaller one and the larger one, because they could both be positive. Yeah? Yeah. Does anybody need more explanation than that? Who wants going twice, going thrice? Well, I've stopped going slowly because people make me wait until I get to going thrice. And when I, just before I finish the phoneme, that is s on thrice, oh yeah, what about number 17? Right? So, if you don't know what a phoneme is, you can go ahead and look that up, and then you will learn something new in math today. Because Lord knows you don't care about learning the math. Just kidding! Somebody stop me. That's a joke from The Mask, if you haven't seen that movie. Uh, at the time, I thought a horrible movie from 1994, Jim Carrey film, but I've soon since come to appreciate the genius that was The Mask. Number four. Somebody answered questioningly. Is it B? Oh. I thought that said the city of Winnipeg. It's like, man, the only people that celebrate the city of Winnipeg are the people that actually live there. And that's only because they're stuck there. I shouldn't say that. I've never been to Winnipeg. It might be a great town. But it seems to me 
What is it? She said questioningly. Is it B or isn't it B, Ashni? It is B. Can we go over Y? Of course we can go over Y. That's not working. All right. Okay. Which is true? There are no solutions that are greater than zero. Well, that can't be because every single solution is greater than zero. So that's wrong. We already know B is the right answer. All real numbers are solutions to when Q of X is less than zero. Q of X is never less than zero. And again, Q of X is never less than zero. You have to know what these symbols mean in order to succeed in this unit. Less than points left. L for less. L for left. And if that's not enough for you, write greater. Okay? Okay. And number five. Five is C as in Cucamonga. Now, according to my good friend Jacob Rankin, Cucamonga sounds like a racial slur. He has decided that that sounds like I am making fun of Australians. I think because Australians have a song, Kookaburra, because there's a bird in Australia called the Kookaburra. So he seems to think that I am somehow being racist. Yeah, of course it would be with a K. Kookamonga is spelled with a C because it's an actual place. Like Kalamazoo and Timbuktu. We went over this yesterday, didn't we? Oh, wasn't this class? I apologize. Kalamazoo is a real place in Michigan. Timbuktu is a real place in Mali. It's a matter of fact, a giant city in Mali with lots of ruins. It's apparently quite beautiful. I, of course, will not go there because Mali is all desert and I don't like desert. I like water. I will go to Morocco. I will go to Western Africa. I will even go to all those places around the Horn of Africa because they all have coastlines. And anywhere there's coastline, there's a chance to surf. Maybe. Which means I will go there. Morocco apparently has spectacular surfing. And they speak French. So. Oui, oui, baguette, baguette. Except, je ne mange pas baguette parce que le baguette est créé avec farine. Le, la farine. Je ne mange pas. Baguettes are created with flour. Gluten-free baguettes are gross. Sans gluten. Sans gluten. All right. In, in Spanish, gluten-free is sin gluten because gluten is indeed a sin. All right, uh, number six. All of these are out of two because you had to manipulate or graph or do something. Uh, this, of course, I don't really understand, but quite a few people as I walked by were graphing this as a parabola. Well, it can't be a parabola because as you can plainly see, there are no squares. It's a straight line. I know I'm not wrong. That's because I'm the teacher. So this, of course, the first thing to do is to get your boundary line, which is 8x equals 2y minus 10. You isolate y, 8x plus 10 equals 2y, 4x plus 5 equals y. Then you graph it. Oh, that was appalling. That was a matting. Appalling. But my name's not Paul, so it's a matting. Technically, everything I do is a matting. <laughs> what are you going to do this weekend? I'm going to go a matting. What does that mean? I'm just going to go be me. Um, one, two, three, four, five. 
I love to go a matting along the mountain track. That song. I love to go a wandering along the mountain path. From Sound of Music, nothing. Sound of Music, Van Traps. We're escaping the Nazis and we're happy about it and skipping along as the Nazis chase us to kill us. No? Okay. And of course, it's a straight line. And then, and then, you must shade it. How do you shade it? The easiest way is to take a test point, zero, zero, and put it in the original equation. Zero greater than or equal to, what's zero minus five? And what is 2 times negative 5? Is, ne- is 0 greater than or equal to negative 10? So where do I shade? Over 0, 0. <sighs> You're something. Number two, of course, the first step is your boundary line. Your boundary line in this case is indeed a parabola. And that parabola is centered at one, two, three, four, five, and up one, two, three, four. It's got a positive A value, so it goes like this. Where do you shade? inside the parabola because that is above the parabola. Yes, it's dotted, but it's a pain in the ass to draw dotted lines, as you all know. But since your favorite thing in the world is pointing out my mistakes, it's not getting your own work right. Nobody cares about that. But let's make sure that we find every mistake Myers does. Is somebody going to tell me I'm not wrong? Thank you. And lastly, solve. Once again, you could use a graph. You could use sign... uh, 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 roots and test points, you could use case analysis. Now, I am going to go not very far out on a limb. As a matter of fact, I don't even have to leave the trunk of the tree to know the answer to this. How many of you hate case analysis? Do you know what your favorite math teacher did today? He went next door to the teacher who will teach you next year when you all take pre-calculus 12 because you're all going to. Why would you waste a le- 12 years of math and not finish the race? That's like running a marathon and stopping at mile 26 when you only have 0.2 of a mile to go. When you take pre-calc 12, I checked with the teacher and I said, hey, do you care if they can do case analysis? And he said, and I quote, no. So let us indeed go, Lennon. Forget it. I won't put it on the test. You don't need to know it. Screw it. Shut up. Society stole all the crap from me. Same with School of Rock. Every cool teacher on t- on movies stole it from me. 
he's not wrong. All right. So anyway, you could, you could find the roots and use test points, or you could graph it. All right? Now, um, depending on where you moved things around, it's a little funke, right? So if you go this way, 12x squared minus 7x minus 10 is greater than 0, then you are looking for spots where the parabola is above 0, yes? If you move it to the right, then you have negative 12x squared plus 7x plus 10 is still greater than 0 because you moved it away from there. The sign doesn't change because we never did any dividing or multiplying by a negative. So if you graph it the blue way, it's going to graph like that, yeah? yeah? Right? If you graph it the gold way, it's going to graph like that, yeah? Right? So in the gold way, you want where it's less than zero, which would be between there and there, yes? Here, you want where the negative part is less than zero. Wait, I did screw it up. Um, when you move it, if you move it this way, the parabola is gold and it's greater than zero. But if you move it this way, then you need... Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, I did it wrong. Did it wrong. What? Oh, she was... Yeah, I hear you. Um, 12x squared... <laughs> minus 7x minus 10 would be less than 0, right? Because we moved it this way. So that would be, yeah, in here, right? And then if we go the other way, it's like that, and I would need the greater than zeros, but it's still in the middle. I, of course, would not bother to graph it. Why? Why do I not need a graph here? How many variables are there? One. So I don't need the y values, do I? So once I get my roots, which I assume you used quadratic formula, and what was it? I didn't do, I haven't done it. What were the roots? Negative two thirds and five fourths, yeah? So there's your number line negative two thirds, thank you, five fourths. Now, all you need to do is check the uh, test point. What's the easiest test point to use? It's available to us. Zero, yes? Zero, zero, minus 10. Is negative 10 less than zero? So this is where my answer lies between the two. Okay, you don't need to graph it. All those are worth two, making that section out of six. Now, this question, everybody's stressed over, and I don't really know why. That's a parabola, right? The light goes away from the parabola, right? Away is above the parabola, isn't it? So, y must be greater than or equal to the parabola. Like people were overthinking this. I'm seeing them. I'm see it's like the light has to go away from the parabola. Now, maybe you were thinking the spotlights are above the stage and shining down. I don't know. But remember, graphs represent real life. They aren't real life. So that page is out of seven. All right, and then I didn't give you any quadratic inequalities on this review because the last two sections were quadratic inequalities and we did a lot of them, all right? We only did one day of linear inequalities. So I added, I only did linears here, okay? Now... 
Of course, what can I do on my vacation? I can scuba, which, of course, you all know is an acronym. Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. That is why you call it scuba diving. It actually is, should be. But because it has become a word in the language, like Discman for a portable compact disc player, or iPod for every MP3 player, right? Anyways, scuba can be what? X or Y, your choice. I'm going to make it X because my good friend Preston just said X. The other choice is kayak which is, of course, a palindrome. And it would be Y, right? Now, is my limit a time limit or a monetary limit? Monetary limit. So the money spent on scuba, $25 per hour. If I go one, I pay 25 bucks. Plus... 20 Y has to be what? Less than or equal to 300. Do I need negatives? No, why not? I cannot have a negative amount of scuba diving. Right now, I am not scuba diving. I am not negatively scuba diving. I'm not scuba diving. I am also not kayaking. So, my wife and I kayaked on our honeymoon. It was lovely. It was the only, ni- it was the only nice sunny day because we went to Tofino. And even though we got married in July, Tofino still sucks. Everybody talks about how spectacular Tofino is. It's rainy, it's dreary, and it's overpriced. And yet, oh, Tofino, so awesome. Anyways, so this is my kayaking. This is my scuba. This is my kayak. And your first step is always to? First step is always to? Make the boundary line. 20 Y equals negative 25x plus 300. Y equals negative 5 fourths x plus 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Slope of negative 5 fourths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, oh, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And it goes like that. Right? Where do you shade? Underneath. Because you have to be less than $300. And then you check. If I do 15 hours of kayaking, 20 times 15 is 300. Do I have any time left over for scuba? No. If I do 50, I lie. 12 hours of scuba, do I have any money left over for kayak? No. So my, I must have a combination of something in there. All right? You could do six and a half because six and a half would still be under there. Under where? Nah. Let's call that out of, I don't know, what do you want to say? What do you think that's worth? Out of 20. Three, four, five, five. All right. I don't know. You decide what it's worth. I know there's a whole other question. I'm waiting for everybody to make the very difficult decision on how much to give themselves out of five. The next one can be out of the square root of pi. I don't care. What is the inequality? (laughs) 
I would go fitty. You could say P and make P your X. I don't care. Fitty dollars for your X when X equals your pen sketches and Y equals your watercolors. So 50X plus 80Y has to be what? Greater than 1200 because he needs $1,200 to make it worth his while. Of course, you would graph it. It would look like this. You'd color in this side. Yes? To graph it, of course, it is y equals um, negative 5 eighths x plus 1,200 divided by 80 is 1 and a half, right? Or 15. So you would graph it that way. This would be 15, and we'd go down 5 eighths. Yeah? Okay, so... That gets you half your marks. List three order pairs within the solution. Any dot out here. Don't care what you put. Any one. All right? I'm not even looking anymore. Any dot. Okay? Now, C. Now he needs 2,400. Does the line's slope change? No. What does it do? It just moves up to 30. And it's still up here. Now let me ask you this. Can you put two functions on one graph? Yeah. Where are the points that would satisfy both conditions? Are they in here where it's pink? Are they in here where it's blue? Are they in here where it's green? Yes. What if one of the lines went that way? And wait. Wait, wait, wait. What if one of the lines went that way and this line was shaded up here and this line was shaded here? Where would you find the points that had the solution? In there, where they're both working. Okay. Yay. Uh, and then solve the new equality to check your prediction. So what has to happen? It goes up, so I need to sell what? More or less? More, right? And that's out of five, making your whole te your review out of 10, and seven is 17, and five is 22. Van de to keep the Francais going. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please turn your page over. This funky font should be page 163. Yeah. All right. When you see that word, what do you automatically know is coming to the party? Variables. Variables. <laughs> We're going to be dealing with variables. <laughs> Why? What about the Cuban Missile Crisis? You were proving something with the Cuban Missile Crisis. Interesting. All right. An algebraic expression. Now, you're smart young people. 
What kind of expressions are we dealing with? Rational expressions. So we seek an algebraic expression that will yield a rational number if we know the variables. Now, what, what do you mean if we know the variables? We always know the variables. Do we? X plus 3 equals 7. What's the variable? X. What is its value? 4. X equals 4. Is 4 a rational number? Yes. Therefore, is this a rational expression? No. Why? Not quite. Why is this not a rational expression? Oh, so close. You were starting and I thought you were going to get there. Because it's, it's an equation. All right? Now, is that a rational expression? Yes. Why? We don't know the value of x. But is there any value of x that will automatically make this not rational? Any rational value of x. No matter what I put in for x, this will be a rational number, right? As long as x is rational. So, as uh, we're going to add to this, we'll yield a rational number if we know the variables. And those variables are what? Those variables themselves are what? Are rational. Okay? Now, I need to remind you what makes a rational number. Rational numbers are as follows, x over y, but what are the rules? y cannot equal 0, and x and y have to be certain things. What must they be? Real numbers? Because the square root of 2 is a real number. Would that be allowed here? No. Okay, so what did you say, Jesley? I can't have infinity over infinity? Wouldn't that just be 1? What? Whole numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up to infinity. I can't have a negative? Integers. X and Y are integers. So we all know that, yeah? So rational expressions can be anything that fits this mold, right? So, two-thirds, is that okay? Is that rational? Would you call it a rational expression? Why not, is that joke? It's got no variables. It's not algebraic, right? But it is rational, okay? What about this one? that one rational? Of course it is, because no matter what I put in for x, as long as it's a rational number, that's a rational number, right? Doesn't matter what I put in there. 2.1. Well, that would be 5.1 over 3, which would be 51 over 30. Okay, right? Negative 8. Negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. Negative 5 over 3, both are integers. Done. Everybody cool? Can't possibly, possibly make that irrational. As long as x is rational, right? Okay, what about this one? Um, x squared over 2. Is that rational? Why? 
Even an irrational number would work there, right? Because once I square it, I get a rational number, don't I? I could even put root 2 for x, right? Because root 2 squared is 2, and 2 over 2 is rational because it's 1. Everybody cool? Everybody with me? All right, what about this one? Is that rational? If x is rational, then it's rational? Okay, zero is a rational number. Is that okay? No. Is this a rational expression? Yes, unless what? X can't be zero. Everybody cool? What about this one? One over y minus three. Is that rational? Yes, as long as what? Y can be zero. Zero minus three is negative three. Y can't be three. And we've seen this already this year, haven't we? These are the restrictions, right? That we used in some previous unit that we did this year. Whatever. Who cares? Because now it's no longer units, is it? It's math, right? Stuff you're bringing from Mrs. Bag Crumble in grade three is coming back. All right. So we're all good with rationals. We can all recognize them, right? Okay. There's some rules about irrationals. Now, uh, that's the wrong word. Damn it. Not rational. I don't want to use irrational because root two is irrational, right? Because it goes on forever. But we can use it in rational expressions. You with me? So I want to be careful with that. These are the things that are not rational expressions. Uh, 4 to the x. Why do you think that's not rational? Remember, I don't mean irrational. Why do you think it's not rational? Well, what is this really? Isn't that the x root of 4? Right? So... For some x's, that works, but not all. Yeah? There's too many that it doesn't work for. Everybody cool? That's no good. And, of course, um, 3 over t uh, plus 7. That's not rational if t equals what? Well, if t is 0, that's okay. If t is negative 7, that's not rational. So what's the rule here? The denominators, the denominators can never evaluate as 0. Is everybody good? Now, there's a lot more to this, but for our purposes in the 11th grade, this is what we're looking for. No zeros in the denominator. Okay? This is going to... You're going to talk about this next year. What to do with that. But we're not going to borrow problems from the future. We all good? Okay. A non-permissible value, and I like to abbreviate them as NPV because you know how lazy I am. I do a lot of writing up here. An NPV is any value... That makes an expression not rational. So if I ever have a value that I cannot use, that is a non permissible value. And in our case, the number one way we check for NPVs is any value which does what to the denominator? Which makes which denominator? Can I have more than one denominator? Is 1 over x plus 2 over y still a rational expression? As long as x and y aren't zero, right? So... Any value which makes which denominator? 
What if I have six denominators? Any, right? Any value which makes any denominator zero. Everybody cool? And that's all there is to it. Nothing new. But, as I said, it's no longer about units. It's about math. So let's start with this nice, easy one. Are there any values of T that would screw this up? No. No. Because I can have 5 times 0 is 0, right? If I divide 0 by 0, I still have 0. Right? I'm going to split this pizza in front of me with all of you. Everybody gets the same amount, which is because I got no pizza. Which is sad. What about S and R? S can't be zero. Why? Because four times zero times R is zero. What about R? R can't be zero. Why? Because zero squared is zero. Zero times anything is? Easy peasy, right? So, where do we look for our non-permissible values? We look at the denominator. Because the numerator is allowed to be zero. So I look at that. What math is happening there? Multiplication. I have factor one and I have factor two, correct? Right? Factor one times factor two is not allowed to be what value? Zero. Which means factor one cannot equal, I don't want to do that vertically, cannot equal zero, and factor two cannot equal zero, correct? So how would we write that? Factor one is x. x can't equal zero. Well, that's pretty easy, right? But what's factor two? What's factor two here? 2x minus 3. Can it be 0? So it can equal 0, except that's not as easy, is it? What do I have to do there? Solve it. Have we already solved this? We've done this before in our factoring unit and in our parabola unit and in our uh, radicals unit. Of course, 2x cannot equal 3. x cannot equal 3 halves. But you already know that from previous units. See how it doesn't matter about the unit anymore? You've got to bring everything. We all cool? Okay, what are you going to look at and see? I'm going to look at the denominator. Damn. What does that denominator represent? If nothing on the rest of that question were there, it was just that, what is that? It's standard form of what? Pardon me, Henry? It's the standard form of a parabola, right? And that's a happy parabola, isn't it? So it would look like this, wouldn't it? A parabola, the denominator, can never equal zero, yes? Where does that parabola equal zero? The what? Say it. Because that, roots, there and there, correct? So how do I find the roots of a parabola? What's the easiest way to find it? Factoring. Does that factor? Does it? Sure it does. P plus one, three, and P minus four. Is that factor one? Can factor 1 equal 0? No. So P plus 3 cannot equal 0. When I do the algebra, P can't equal negative 3. Please tell me you already see the shortcut that I've shown you 100,000 times. It's the opposite of what's there. So what's this one? P cannot equal 4. Everybody cool? Now, really, what have we done here? Fractions from grade 3? Factoring from grade 10, roots as a zero from grade 11.
We got to bring it all to the party. No more units, all math, right? Turn the page over. What? Yeah, I don't know why, because there's no reason that this should work and the cool ones shouldn't. Okay. When a rational expression is in simplest form, the numerator and the denominator... Denominator cannot be simplified. So, what do I mean by that? Well, let's do a real easy one. If I gave you 3 over 27, is that a rational number? Ah, 3 is a bad one. Hold up. 12 over 27, is that a rational number? Yes or no? He waited patiently. Yes, of course it is. Why? They're both rational numbers. X and Y are both rational, Neither one, and Y is in zero. Yeah? Okay. Would you ever hand that into Mrs. Bad Crumble? Why not? Because it's not in simplest form. We could simplify it. How would you simplify that? You would divide both by three. Why three? Yeah, so what does that make three? What's the fancy math word for it? It's the greatest common factor, yes? Right? What are we doing here? We are actually doing greatest common factor, aren't we? Now you all say, oh, I divide by three, I divide by three. But what you're really doing is factoring, yes? Because this becomes what? Three times four, yes? And what does this become? Three times nine. Hey, three over three, what's that? One, so it cancels. Everybody cool? So when you are simplifying fact fractions or rational numbers, you are actually factoring. Everybody understand this? Let's do a slightly bigger one. Um, just give me a second to do this roughly. Okay, uh, okay, if I wanted you to put that in simplest form, what would your first step be? What do you think? You'd what? You'd divide them both by three because you know that little handy trick, right? So you would divide by 3, and you would get 700 over 21, yes? Then what? You divide by 7 to get 100 over 3, yes? Then what? Am I done? Absolutely, I'm done, correct? Now, watch this. If I take 2,100, 2,100, and... Factor it, remember back from grade 10, that is 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 5 times 7. Everybody cool with that? Prime factors. We remember doing this in grade 10. It's how we did square root of 2100, right? Okay. And 63 is what? Three times three times seven, yeah? Everyone agree? Well, what do you see right there and there? Gone. What do you see right there and there? Threes, what happens? Gone, right? What's left? 
2 times 2 times 5 times 5 over 3. What's 2 times 2? What's 4 times 5? What's 5 times 20? 100 over 3. Everybody cool? So all we're doing is factoring, right? So let us have a look at this situation. Is that in simplest form? I don't know. I got to check. How do I check? I see if there's common factors. Can I factor that? Can I factor 3x minus 6? It's the easiest kind of factoring to do. Somebody factor that for me so I don't have to lose an eye to my anger. 3 bracket x minus 2. Yeah? Okay. So I know there's some factors up there. How do I factor the pink one? I've given you five, four or five ways to do that. You choose. Two. It ends up being 2x minus 5. No, x plus 5 and x minus 2. However you choose to factor it. That's what it's going to come out to. Yes? So 2x plus 5. And x minus 2. What do you see? What do you see there and there? Gone, gone. So what is my simplified answer? But we have forgotten to do one thing. What did we forget to do? The whole box is written about it on the first page of these notes. I forgot to do my non-permissible values. When are non-permissible values a thing? At the beginning, at the middle, at the end, all the way through, when? All the way through. So, when do I need to check for non-permissible values? At star, at fish, or at peace sign? All of them. Now, this is a pain in the ass, right? Because if I want to check the zeros there, I got to graph it, which means I got to find the roots, right? Fortunately, factoring it does what? Gives me the roots. So here is the only place I really need to check. X cannot equal what? Two and... Negative five halves. Yeah? All right. Let's look at B. Can I factor that green one? There's something about that green one that we don't really like as math people. What is it? Say it. We don't like a negative variable, do we? So what's the one thing I can take out of every expression? So can I make this top negative 1, t minus 1? Is negative 1 times t negative t? Is negative 1 times negative 1 positive 1? So we're cool. How do I factor the pink one? It's a difference of squares, so how do I factor it? Are we at the stage where we must check our NPVs? What are they? T can equal what? Plus or minus one. And then now, what do I get to do? Cancel, cancel. Negative one over T plus one. And now, as long as T is not one, this is a rational expression. If t is 10 million, it's negative 1 over 9,999,999. Right? Yay! Ooh, barf. What do I got to do there and there? Surprise, surprise, factor. 
How do I factor the top one? Hint, look right above it. Right, but it's not X. Yes. And how do I factor the bottom one? Y plus 5, Y minus 2. What are my NPVs? What can't Y be? And where are my cancels? What's my final answer? I'm doing this on purpose. What's my final answer? Why isn't my final answer two? Why is that not okay? Yes. What if it was this? Now what's my final answer? Two. Everybody understand that? Remember that from the last time we were doing stuff like this? When I told you that x plus 3 over 3 is not x? Because you cannot do that? All right. So what's this last one? Super easy. What bugs me about the green one? I don't like a negative variable, so what's coming out? Negative 2. And what's staying in? M minus 3 over, what's the pink one? Ash's favorite. So how do we factor it? What are our NPVs? Plus or minus three. And where do I cancel? What's my final answer? So easy, right? Now remember I warned you. The math isn't difficult. But it's complicated. Right? We're going to do three together and then we're going to stop. Then I'm going to tell you what you need to do. Now, as you all know, your first thing you would do here is take that and put it in for X. Even though most of you have been in my class for two years and have hear, heard me say, oh my God, simplify first. So let's simplify, shall we? What's that top one? Difference of squares. So what is it? And then? Over. What goes? Why did I not check NPVs? Because I got values anyway, right? Neither one of those values are going to screw this up, right? 4x plus 3y over 2. And that, even though you think you can't, you can do it in your head. Because 4 times 26 is 108, yeah? But I need how many decimals? 1. 10.8. Plus, what's 3 times 12? But I need how many decimals? So 3.6 over 2. What's 10.8 plus 3? 13.8, right? What's 0.8 plus 6? 1.4. So I am at 14.4 over 2. What's 14 divided by 2? What's 4 divided by 2? 7.2. In our heads, we got the answer. Now, go back to here and try to do that with those. Well, 2.6 squared, right? Since most of you were a little dodgy at 2.6 times 4 in your head, 
I don't want you doing 2.6 squared times 16 in your head, do I? You, of course you can do it, but why would you? I could walk to Disneyland for almost free. Why would I? How old and decrepit and out of shape do you think I am that I couldn't walk to Disneyland? Just for that, Aaron, when I retire in 2032 and you're, let's see, you're 17 now, 60 now, so when you're 30, watch the news. Retired Abbotsford teacher begins trek to California to prove punk-ass kids in 2019 wrong. I don't care. It should record that all you punks think I couldn't walk to California. Huh? Well, I would figure you could probably put down 25K a day at walking. It's 2,500K to L.A. Now, do we mean California? Because California is like 900 kilometers long. So do I just got to get to California? Or do I got to get to L.A., what everybody thinks is California? I got to get to Disneyland? Yeah, it's 20, that's 2,500K. 25K a day would take 100 days. Anaheim is close enough to L.A. No, it's not. It literally isn't. We are 115 kilometers from the center of downtown Vancouver. Anaheim is not 115 kilometers from the center of LA. Yeah, 18 days of non-stop walk. Yeah, yeah. Of course I'm going to stop. I find that very hard to believe because the Google walking people, if you got to walk to 7-Eleven from here, if you punch that, it's like 29 minutes. I don't get it. All right, now listen. I know it's a short block. That's why I'm saying listen. Tomorrow you have a test on inequalities. I want everything up to multiplying and dividing rational expressions done by 20 minutes into Monday's class. Okay, you've got the answers. Have a good day. See you tomorrow.